What's going on, y'all? Attorney Tom here. What if I told you a controversial Whitest Kids You Know sketch was used as the centerpiece for a Supreme Court case regarding the First Amendment? Well, it's true. In today's video, I'm going to be going over the Supreme Court case Alonis versus the United States. And in order to properly cover that subject, first, we must watch the sketch. The sketch is titled, Is It Illegal to Say? And disclaimer, I told you it was controversial and I'm not going to get into any politics behind this sketch, but it's fundamental that we watch this to give analysis on the Supreme Court case. So everybody be on your best behavior. Let's jump right into it. I'm Trevor Moore. Did you know that it's illegal to say I want to kill the president of the United States of America? It's illegal. It's a federal offense. It's one of the only sentences that you're not allowed to say. Now, it was okay for me to say it right then because I was just telling you that it's illegal to say I want to kill the president of the United States of America. I'm not actually saying it. I'm just letting you know that it's illegal to say that. It's kind of like a public service. I'm letting you know so that you don't accidentally go out and say something like that. Um, but what's interesting is that it's, it's very illegal to say, I really, really think someone out there should kill the president of the United States of America. That's illegal, extremely illegal, very, very illegal, but not illegal to say with a mortar launcher because that's its own sentence. It's an incomplete sentence, but it may have nothing to do with the sentence before that. So that's perfectly fine, perfectly legal. I also found out that it's incredibly illegal, extremely illegal to go on television and say something like, the best place to fire a mortar launcher at the White House would be from the roof of the Rockefeller Hewitt building because of minimal security and you'd have a clear line of sight to the president's bedroom. Insanely illegal ridiculously recklessly insanely illegal yet even more illegal to show an illustrated diagram <laughs> insanely illegal ridiculously horribly felonious because they will come to your house in the middle of the night and they will lock you up extremely against the law uh one thing that is technically legal to say is that we have a group that meets fridays at midnight under the brooklyn bridge and the password is six emperor tyrannus i'm not gonna lie i was chuckling because yeah it's a funny sketch it doesn't need to be political but the satire or the the meta-ness it's a very meta kind of sketch and that's my kind of humor but that's for everybody being immature i don't want to see any keyboard warriors in the chat this isn't about that it's not about politics my channel is not about politics don't even think about it well let me tell you a little story mr elenis elenis alonis i don't know how to say his name the defendant was in the process of a divorce and he took the words from this skit and he replaced the words president with his wife. So quite literally, the defendant posted, and I quote, did you know that it's illegal for me to say I want to kill my wife? It's illegal. It's indirect criminal contempt. It's one of the only sentences I'm not allowed to say. Now, it was okay for me to say it right then because I was just telling you that it's illegal for me to say that I want to kill my wife. Um, but what's really interesting is that it's very illegal to say, I really, really think someone should kill my wife, but not illegal to say with a mortar because that's its own sentence. And the post continues until the skit is complete. You get the point and we're gonna put the entire thing up right here and he ended the post by saying art is about pushing limits i'm willing to go to jail for my constitutional rights are you so after this initial post was posted he was visited by some agents in the fbi and after the fbi agents visited our lovely defendant he posted the following dot 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 took all the strength i had not to turn the bitch ghost pull my knife flick my wrist and slit her throat leave her bleeding from her jugular in the arms of her partner but just like in the first post he ended it by saying and if you really believe this shit, i have some bridge rubble to sell you tomorrow boom 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 saying it was all just a joke well, as it turns out for our defendant, he was indicted for making these posts and convicted to 44 months 
in jail. He then, of course, appealed his conviction to the Court of Appeals, which affirmed the conviction. Then he appealed all the way to the United States Supreme Court. So the question before the United States Supreme Court was, does a conviction of threatening another person under 18 USC 875C require proof of the defendant's subjective intent to threaten? You see, the trial court convicted the defendant on something called the objective reasonable person standard. Essentially, what the trial court held is that if an objectively reasonable person in the same or similar circumstance would have deemed that the defendant's Facebook post were a threat, well, then they are a threat and therefore illegal. And I don't know about you, but if somebody was posting those kinds of things about me, especially if we were going through a divorce, I would objectively feel threatened. I would think that those aren't jokes. And the little satire at the end to say, oh, this isn't a joke. It's only a joke. I'm protecting my constitutional rights. I would just be terrified by that kind of language because in my mind that actually makes it worse it's very meta it's saying i know what you know what i'm thinking and i'm just going to disclaim it with a few magic words so i think there's no doubt that objectively a reasonable person in the same or similar circumstance would find that language threatening now what the defendant argued is that the objective reasonable person standard is not enough but you also need to prove some sort of subjective intent to commit the crime alleged or the crime threatened and sure enough the supreme court agreed with the defendant in an 8-1 majority the court said that the prosecution needed to show that the defendant intended the Facebook post to be threats, meaning there needed to be some sort of proof of subjective intent. The objective reasonable person standard was not enough in this case. And the court's reasoning behind this decision is that essentially the objective reasonable person standard does not go far enough in separating what could be innocent childish jokes such as Trevor Moore's or potentially threatening criminal activity. And if you have a situation that is on the fringe borderline, that's just a coin flip, it's better to err on the side of not convicting people. Better have a guilty person go free than an innocent person be convicted. At least that's what eight members of the court said. And can y'all guess who the sole dissenter was? I'm going to give you five seconds to leave your comments down below and guess. The correct answer was Justice Thomas. He was the lone dissenter. Essentially, what he argued is nine of the 11 circuit courts had already addressed the issue and applied the general intent standard. And by reversing that, just basically opened up the floodgates because no courts really would know how to address this issue and essentially moving forward it would leave courts uncertain on whether intent to threaten is required or if recklessness is enough creating this big ambiguity also justice thomas argued that the act of physically posting the facebook post itself was the intent that the objective reasonable person would have known that facebook post was in fact a threat and the intent was publishing it on facebook for everybody to see and in the alternative if there was no intent or the defendant did not explicitly intend for that to occur his ignorance does not give him shelter that's kind of like the saying if you don't know you're breaking a law and you break one anyways that doesn't give you a free pass you still are breaking the law or so that's what Justice Thomas's argument is or was. I guess is because the case hasn't really been addressed since. So to conclude, as many of you know, I never get political on this channel. I don't give a sh about politics, but this isn't political. This is the law. So I'm going to give my opinion. And I think I tend to agree with the majority in this case for the sole reason, like I said earlier, I would rather have a convicted, a guilty person go free than an innocent person be convicted do i think this guy probably intended for it to be a threat in this case probably yes but you need to establish the line so it doesn't get blurred 
down the future. And I would err on the side of caution for preserving somebody's liberty. That's just how I tend to think. So I'm all for greater protections of the First Amendment. But let me know what y'all think in the comments. We can have a civil and good discussion about the law. All right, y'all, that's it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please consider subscribing to this community and hit that like button. I had a bunch of fun making this video, reading all these interesting articles about this particular case, and uh, just remembering Trevor Moore. He was truly a comedic genius. This kind of satire is very, very big brained. All right, y'all, that's it. Thanks again for watching. Talk to you later. Bye. He's a catastrophic injury attorney who accidentally became a YouTuber. Attorney Tom.